Good morning and welcome. So this is gentle yoga. We're going to do a bunch of hip kind of focused releases today. <laughs> so um, a strap might be handy. Um, if uh, holding onto your big toe while you're laying down is not a comfortable thing, grab a yoga strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, anything that you can sort of lasso your foot with a towel or a scarf. Those are usually out at this time of year. <laughs> so you might have one of those handy. Um, now you can uh, add some extra support under your legs um, if you like, but I'm gonna suggest that we start in what's called constructive rest. So we're gonna lie down. You can have a little pillow under your head if you want, or you know, a little blanket. Oh, mostly what we're interested in is getting the, uh, the hips to be in a kind of neutral position. So we're not pulling on the hip flexor in either direction. And then the feet resting on the floor so that uh, so that there it feels a little bit like the femur bone just kind of gently drops into the hip socket. So not so close like a bridge pose where we want to have that little extra bit of lift, but a little bit softer than that. And for me, sometimes the hips distance apart feels okay, but usually just slightly wider is better. If the legs want to fall inward or fall out and there's nothing that you can seem to really do, to, there's no position is really comfortable, there's a couple of options. So one option would be to place a block in between the knees and sort of let your legs lean into the block and that might line them up okay. The other option would be if they kind of want to fall outward would be to create a loop with your strap and kind of place it around the knees just so they have something to lean into. So both of those are great options if you want to um, consider one of those. And then sort of allow yourself to figure out with the shoulders, just kind of the place where the arms, the upper back and the chest all sort of find a comfortable relationship to one another. So there's not a feeling that the shoulders being pulled in any one direction on either side. Now this is a position, if you have tight hip flexors, where you could use just this one thing, just do this one pose um, for as long as like 10 or 15 minutes at the end of a day, um, just to let the hip flexors relax. We're not gonna do it that long. <laughs> so we'll see, um, you know, we'll do a couple of moments here, like four minutes or so. So we're gonna let the hip really relax. We're gonna just breathe. So I'm going to suggest a breath technique where you inhale and just pause at the top of that inhale. And exhale, just let the breath come out softly and try to imagine sort of physically letting go a little bit more with each exhale. just kind of slow down. Relaxed. Let your eyes get a little heavier, a little kinder.
do about four more breaths. Now, we're going to do a movement pattern with the legs, and the most uh, kind of important aspect of this is for the leg to sort of be able to be sort of heavy in the socket. So that's the notion with this particular pose, right? Take one more breath here. And then we're gonna sort of try to glide the leg as best we can. Sometimes yoga mats are sticky, it doesn't glide that well. So once you get to the end, let your leg rest heavy. And once you get back to the starting point here, let the leg rest heavy. So if you can glide the leg, definitely do. But if it doesn't work out, either end will be fine. So we're, I'm lifting the toes on my right foot so that it's just the little, little back of my heel that's on the ground. And then I'm gonna try to glide that leg all the way out straight. And as I get there, I'm gonna reach through the leg, keep the toes kind of mostly pointing up. And then I'm gonna glide the leg back and let it rest. And that's it, we're gonna do that twice more. Toes up, glide out, stretch. best you can and then rest and glide out and then glide back and rest. Now we're going to do the same pattern but on the left side. So the left leg toes go up and then you stretch out and glide back and rest. Toes up, glide out. trying to keep my foot mostly centered right in the, in the middle so there's not a rotation in the hip socket, right? One more time gliding out. We're going to do the rotation in just a moment. <laughs> and then glide back in and rest. So we'll switch back over to the right side. And as promised, we're going to glide the leg out and then rotate it outward as far around as it wants to go. So feeling from the hip socket, like there's a point where you'll know you should stop then stretch, keeping the external rotation, we'll glide back, swing the leg to the middle, and rest. Glide it out, rotate outward however far it's willing to go, stretch, glide in, so the knee's gonna be out wide, and then glide back. If that bothers your knee at all, you can always come back to the center and glide back in. External rotation. Stretch, glide back, and then rest. We'll do the left side, same idea. Toes up, glide out, rotate out, stretch, and glide in, and return. Now, one thing that's interesting to me is that there's a slightly different range of motion for me on the right side and the left side. Like one will rotate a little more than the other but I still wanna just go wherever the hip says is the right amount, not worrying whether I'm symmetrical on both sides. Gliding out, I'm gonna rotate out, find that sensation in the hip, and then glide back and rest. So switching back over to the right side, I'm gonna do the internal rotation. For me, this is a more challenging one. So from the hip socket, I'm gonna rotate my leg inward. There's a tendency for me to try to turn my foot more. I'm gonna resist that tendency and try to just do it with the hip here. Stretch, keep the internal rotation as long as possible and then bring myself back to the center. Feel the hip relax and then glide out. Rotate inward, stretch, glide back center. And one more time, gliding out, rotating inward and stretch, and glide back, and center. So I'm giving myself one extra breath just to let the hips relax. And then I'm going to glide the left one out, rotate inward, stretch, bring the leg back, Center it, relax. We'll do that twice more. 
I'm trying to feel for that sense that my hip kind of really lets go into the ground before I start the next pattern. One of the things about the hip flexors is they'll kind of pull towards the front and stay there for a second. We're trying to let it settle back. One more gliding out and rotating. And then drawing back and settling. All right, so I'm gonna let my hips really settle in. We're done with that little movement pattern. So this is meant to be a release. So if the, the big, particularly the psoas muscle, but the iliacus and the psoas come together here in the front of the hip, right in that kind of flex it, you know, where the thigh moves toward the, thigh, um, the chest, the torso. Uh, in any case, uh, like you might feel it more right here in the front, but for me, I notice the difference in my low back because there's no longer this kind of pressure uh, pulling my, you know, my spine forward in that lower back area. So just see what's true for you if there's any change or sense that anything has softened there. We're gonna kind of get to the rest of the uh, muscles connected. So we'll get our strap uh, for this series. And then the left leg is gonna remain straight for a while. <laughs> so if you want, you can put a little pillow under your left knee, just to sort of, or a little blanket or whatever, just to give that leg a little, um, a little soft hangout zone so that hip stays relaxed. All right, so then we're gonna take the strap or you can just hold onto your big toe with your B-side fingers if that's your preference. Bring the leg in and put the strap around the ball foot if you're using one. Now, I like a yoga strap for the reason that you can make like a little cinched in circle and then it's got this long <laughs> handle that you can put if it's long enough. I don't know how long your strap is, but you might be able to put it like under your shoulder um, mine comes out on the side over here, but depending on the length of your strap, it may or may not go that far, and the tightness of your hamstrings. <laughs> the adjustment should be personal to you. So you can hold on to the strap with your hand, or if, you, if it's long enough to go behind you, you might be able to hold it just slightly on the other side. I'm trying to free my ponytail here. All right. So I'm leaning my leg into this. I'm kind of playing with the, the edges of it, pointing my foot and flexing. So that's kind of interesting, rotating the leg out and in kind of has an, a little shift. I'm just gonna try to find a spot where it feels interesting. And for the most part, I've got a nice sort of stretch all the way across the whole back of my thigh. A little bit on the inside, a little bit on the outside and all the way through the middle. If I rotate out, it it's all on one side. Rotate in, it shifts all to the other side. So I'm just finding that sort of happy medium, kind of pressing the heel up a little bit, letting my calf muscle join the party. And then I'm noticing, like, am I, I was just carrying a little bit of tension on my left side, like my hip was gripping a little bit. So I'm letting that side relax now. Try to kind of find where I've got one side that's really active, but the other side can stay as relaxed as possible. I'm, everything in the body is interconnected and so the nervous system does not know the difference between me trying to you know do all kinds of fun stuff with one leg I have to be conscious <laughs> to make that little shift so we're gonna hang out here for like another 30 seconds or so four breaths or so my left hip, the leg is going out to the side. I'm going to take some of that support away. There we go. All right, so I can, again, kind of experiment, roll the, you know, do a little internal rotation versus external rotation. For me, the internal rotation feels a little softer and a little more like the stretch is spread out through the whole adductor area. Whereas if I externally rotate this at the hip socket, it gets real, real spicy, right down this kind of inner um, hamstring 
a big adductor magnus kind of line and sometimes I want the spicy but sometimes I do not <laughs> so you can play with that you can play with flexing the foot versus pointing the toes for me that makes a shift happen <laughs> And then again, I'm gonna to try to remind this uh, left hip, just relax. <laughs> if I can do the conscious effort of one leg being really excited and full of verb, verdant, <laughs> and the other leg relaxed. <laughs> Not sure that's an appropriate use of the word verdant. <laughs> leg across the midline and I'm going to make some decisions. So I've got a little bit of space um, issues. I can roll just enough into this twist to feel this outer hip and that is nice. I could also bend my knee and go a little more fully into the twist. But that's just a personal preference. I'm, you know, if you don't have any space issues, you could you know, let your legs stay straight and keep going into the twist a little bit more. And I've got, like, this is kind of interesting for me just to go about halfway between the two points. So I'm going to hang out right there. Use this block as a way to kind of rest my hip, I think. <laughs> so stretching into this leg, kind of pulling on the strap, sending my hip down a little bit. So I've got a little, a whole, a stretch through this whole kind of outer hip, outer edge of my thigh. There's like the, just the babiest little bit of a twist. I might add on to the twist in a minute. Or, you know, less than a minute. <laughs> but in a bit. twist. We'll stay for about another 30 seconds or so. to the center, release that leg. Oh. Now, I'm gonna put this leg down really gently, and then I'm gonna bring the other leg in, and I'm gonna start with the constructive rest position. That's where we started in the first place. I'm just gonna pause there for a moment, and see if I notice in this position any difference between the left side and the right side. Again, I'm just kind of sending my awareness kind of deep into the belly of my pelvis here. Try to notice sort of the back edge where the, you know, between the spine and the back of the hip. Notice the muscle that lives in here that can move forward or settle back. I'm just trying to feel where that lands right now. Does it feel like the muscle's being pulled forward or? relaxing into the bone and then I'm going to extend my legs 
and see if the shift, there's a little difference there in how that feels. Like does one side of my spine get picked up a little more than the other side? Or is that pretty even? And that's more just noticing how the hip flexors land compared to all this other muscle tissue that sort of surrounds them. Okay, just trying to develop a deep and intimate awareness of my hips. <laughs> so I'm gonna let the right side rest. Put the little pillow under there so there's a nice soft hip flexor. And then I'm gonna do this whole sequence again on the other side. Turn myself a little bit at a diagonal so I've got more space. Okay, starting with the hamstrings. Based on the tool that you're using, you might wind up with uh, the strap you're know, holding onto it or letting it kind of hang out underneath the upper back. It might be wrapped around your waist. <laughs> That's another possibility. And then once I'm here, I'm gonna kind of play with like, do I want more space? Does the rotation feel nice? leaning the leg into the strap versus kind of pressing into it. Stay about 30 more seconds. I'm just trying to relax a little more deeply into the whole sort of <laughs> backside of the the inside backside of my body. How's that? <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. <sighs> Take two more breaths. to the side, try to kind of find an interesting amount of stretch there. Oh, hello. <laughs> Again, a little internal rotation, a little external rotation, you can kind of explore that option. more breaths or so. I'm sensing my left side is a little more sensitive than the right side, which is not normally the case. It's usually the other way around. So one of the things I find really interesting about doing the same poses often is that you can kind of use them as a sort of, you know, <laughs> barometer. That Maybe that's the right word. Um, you know, it's kind of how things are shifting and changing and uh, morphing in the body. So oh, I'm going to come back and again, I'm going to start with just the kind of about halfway uh, into the twist kind of position because I like what that does for this like this kind of one little pocket 
of um, glutes on the side of my hip over here. And then I'll go more deeply into the twist, which stretches you know, other, other areas as well. So just choose for yourself what you think is appropriate. Again, I'm trying to kind of keep my right side really relaxed as I'm energetically kind of pulling on and pushing into the strap and keeping a lot of action happening on the left side. Can I simultaneously <laughs> get the two hemispheres of my brain to work together where one sends relaxation signals and the other energetic signals. <laughs> take this into the twist a little bit more. I'm just going to lose the strap for now, but you can keep carry on with what you're up to. Let's say about 30 more seconds. Now I am going to come back onto my back um, after this next couple of breaths. I'll give myself the same sort of little check-in that I did before. And then essentially we're just going to flip over um, onto the belly. So if you want to do some movement in between those two things, um, you certainly can do that. All right, I'm going to roll back. I'm going to unwind the legs. I'll start with this uh, constructive rest. And I come back to where we started. Try to feel myself inhabit or relax into the deep sort of inner portion of my back. out a straight leg position and see how that feels. There's a little less tug than usual, right? So normally if I lay down on the floor, there's like a little sense that my lower back is being sort of picked up and curved a little further forward, but that's softened now, which is nice. All right, so when you're ready, <laughs> we're essentially just going to roll ourselves over. Now, We'll do some cobras and then we're gonna do um, a little sphinx and then a little half frog. <laughs> so we'll circle the shoulders for a bit. Maybe lift one up and then the other. Now I'm gonna start with my hands really close to like aligned with my face, <laughs> way up high. My elbow almost touches the ground, but not quite. But if you have longer arms, yours might. <laughs> so we're gonna lift into Cobra, plant the hands broad in the chest, and I'm kind of trying to flatten out across the front of my hip. You can bend at the knee if you'd like. And then we'll come back down, slide the hands back about a half an inch, an inch maybe lift into cobra, lengthen, kind of try to stretch out the front of the hip, coming back down, little shoulder movement, slide the hands back about an inch, lift into cobra, again I'm trying to kind of flatten the front of my hip a little bit, press my thighs into the floor, <laughs> come on back down one more time, a little shoulder action. Slide the hands back, lift. Again. I bring my elbows underneath me. And instead of actively pressing the hips towards the floor, I'm just going to try to let them relax into the floor. I'm taking the opposite tact. Now, if this feels like it's too intense of a low back situation, you can come to the crocodile instead. Same thing holds true. We're going to relax the front of the hip and try to let the hip flexors kind of settle with gravity a little differently through the middle of the <laughs> pelvic bowl. Now, if 
find if I bring my elbows slightly closer together than shoulder distance and slightly forward of my shoulder, that generally speaking, um, this is a comfortable position to just rest in. If that's not true, then definitely choose a different option. You can press yourself up even higher, kind of put, push the palms on the floor and lift a little higher up if that seems appropriate. I really don't have enough curve in my low back for that for myself. It doesn't make much of a difference. Now, one of the legs is gonna be doing um, this version of the frog where you reach, theoretically you reach back and hold onto your foot. I'm gonna use a strap, but you can hold onto your foot with your hand. And then the other leg is gonna be doing a different version of the frog. This is the prone version where we sort of stick the leg out like a little frog flipper, okay? So we're gonna do that on each side and you can keep the little sphinxy up on the elbows or come to a little crocodile uh, and lower down or somewhere in between, you could throw a pillow into the mix um, and rest, but also be propped up, right? So I'm gonna put the strap around my right foot and I'm gonna hold this over my head, basically, over the shoulder. I'm gonna adjust that until the buckle's in the right spot. And then bring my left leg into this little frog arrangement on the other side and then I can kind of pull my foot in and simultaneously kind of let my hip rest heavy into that mat. So I want the front of my hip to be kind of heavy and the quadriceps to get an appropriate amount of stretch. And then on the other side, it's sort of more oriented to the inner thigh and groin, depending on how you le level your pelvis or lean towards one side it will change the way it feels. <laughs> I just get as level as I can, given the circumstances of joint placement, etc. four or maybe five breaths. Right. So with my exhale, I'm gonna let my foot kind of drop back toward the floor here on the leg that's <laughs> got the strap on it and then I'm gonna roll myself to the side a bit and unwind the other side of the frog. Oh, if you're not using the strap, of course, you would have just let go of your foot. <laughs> Notice the two hips in relationship to each other, just kind of settle a bit. Welcome to do a few more rounds of Cobra if you guys are friends and you love each other. <laughs> side. So now I'm going to put my left leg in the strap. And that one's going to go over my head. I'm going to put the right one out like a little frog flipper. <laughs> I guess it depends on which kind of frog you are. <laughs> are you a tree frog? <laughs> Toad. <laughs> Maybe one of these is more toad-like and one more tree frog-like. Okay, so 
So I'm kind of deciding how much I want my foot in versus how much I'm kind of leveling or flattening or softening through the front of my hip. Those two things are the kind of levers on that pose. And on the other side, I can kind of bring my toes closer to the middle, can take the foot a little further out. I can roll a little more toward that hip based on how that side feels. And again, we're just gonna settle in, stay a while. Breathe, <laughs> deep, smooth, rhythmic breath, or maybe that little brief pause at the top of the inhale and then the exhale. more deeply breathe. Stay for about four or five more breaths. side and then we can just rest on the floor or you could take a child's pose oh. whichever seems like a better option Final relaxation, which you can do either laying on your back, you can stay with the child's pose, <laughs> you can do a seated meditation posture, which is what I feel inclined to do today, or if you'd rather, you could do something like a legs up the wall or legs over the couch, legs on a chair. get to pick <laughs> based on how it uh, feels to you what's the right answer I'm gonna decide <laughs> do I like the seated meditation posture the answer is yes and I'm gonna add a blanket primary purpose of the last pose is to just relax, <laughs> which might be best accomplished lying down, I will agree. <laughs> it's 
Sometimes we've been lying down for a while. It feels nice to change. But in any case, once you've decided on a posture, let yourself relax and just kind of settling in. A little movement in the shoulders, the neck. So find that sense of ease. Test out a couple of different possibilities with the arms. Is the palms up better or the palms down better? Or is it down? And again, you have to do these all on your own. Sometimes with Shavasana, I like my palms, you know, kind of like my arms resting over my ribs or one hand over the heart or both arms out like <laughs> super wide. You get to decide on your own. But test out some stuff, see how it feels. Go with your intuition. If you like something, go with that. And then let yourself relax. And if things change, you change your mind about what you're liking, then change. Way through this, you want to lie down or sit up, do that. All right. Take a deep breath and then with your exhale, just let yourself relax into the shape you've chosen. availability for it. Let yourself relax a little more deeply here. Bring your attention back to the breath. And if it's available, take that little pattern of inhaling and pausing briefly. And then letting the exhale gently release. More big breath. Mm. When you're lying in Shavasana, give yourself a big stretch. If you're seated, give yourself whatever version of a stretch feels nice that way. Oh, I like a little side bend on each side. <laughs> oh. 
stretch, wiggle. <laughs> Eventually we'll meet up in a seated position if we're not already there. <laughs> ah. Thank you so much for joining me for some gentle yoga this morning. Let's take a big breath together. Nice big inhale. Big deep sigh. Ah. Namaste friends. <laughs>